Charles Krauthammer is a writer and columnist and resolute defender of the West, and he joins us tonight. So, Charles, why the displaced rage? I'm not defending the president's tweets. I don't think he ought to be tweeting at all. But you look at television, you would think that his crime is greater than the crime committed on London Bridge. Look, you're always going to have lunatic voices on the left. Some will get expressed on cable TV. But generally speaking, this is not... Look, there are a lot of stories about the lunacy of the left, the, the, the suppression of speech on campus, the rioting, the sort of anti-fascist so-called rioting, if somebody dares say things politically incorrect. That's all true. Those are real stories. They ought to be covered. But the London attack is not really a media story. It's not a political correctness story. It's a story about Islamic radicalism. And the tragedy here is, the president is sort of right in talking about immigration. But the point he's missing is that the problem was immigration 30 years ago. We're 30 years late. The terrorists were 30 years old. This was a, a failure, and it generally is a failure, of assimilation, integration of these immigrants by mostly Europeans uh, over the last 30 years, which is why it is not amenable to solution. Well, but it is in this country, because, of this course, country Europe is, is at least 30 years ahead of us on the same immigration path. And That's, so yes. you could, if you took it seriously, prevent to some extent what has happened in Europe. But it is also a political story when people are being arrested for criticizing a religion or voicing their political views. I mean, that is actually happening in Europe and has for a right. while. They don't have the First Amendment. We don't have the same problem of assimilation. America is blessedly different in this regard, which is one reason why you have an epidemic of radical Islamic terrorism in Europe, and you don't have it here. And the one major attack, the one catastrophic attack, was entirely from outsiders who worked their way through our system. Here, what is the characteristic of the European attacks, so tragic and so hard to deal with, is the fact that these are British citizens raised in a country, second generation. Here are second generation immigrants, generally speaking. I'm not speaking about the Muslims in particular. Assimilate. That's the story of the Jews, the Italians, the Poles. And the third generation is so assimilable, you can hardly tell. Do we that know that? That is not the case. Well, the scale is, is so different. So we, this country is, what, 1 percent Muslim? France, we don't know exactly, but maybe 10 percent. I mean, the, it's just a, it's a much different scale in Europe from what it is here. Absolutely. 10 percent of the population in France is estimated to be Muslim right. immigrants. No, it's a question of scale, but it's a question of also history. We have a history of being able to, to uh, import immigrants in a way and to make them into Americans. But that, that is true. The question of scale is important. It's one of the reasons why people here are so strongly against illegal immigration, because the fear is that this is sort of a monoclonal immigration. It's one, it's Hispanic speaking, mostly Mexican, which is wonderful. But the problem is that if they become a critical mass in certain parts of the country, then you get a problem of assimilation where people end up not speaking the language and not integrating. In Brooklyn, for example, you've got 150 nationalities, but they are so relatively small that the assimilation almost is automatic. That's been our history for 150 but years. But don't you think our Here, attitudes have changed? Assimilation doesn't happen. We were talking about this in the commercial break. It doesn't happen unless the host country demands it and says, here's our culture, here's our language, here are our values, adopt them or leave. Normal countries do that. We don't do that anymore. Well, we do it to a certain extent. I think the bilingual education fad was a terrible mistake because it created separateness. When you add to that the monoclonal immigration, meaning it's not from around the world. It's not from, you know, equally distributed the way it was 100 years ago at Ellis Island. But it is mostly Hispanic speaking. And you end up in a community where you don't get to learn English. That, I think, is the problem. But you're right. There is a loss of spirit in the West, not so much in the U.S. as in Europe, where we, we don't believe in ourselves, where our history is flawed, where we teach our kids all of the sins of the American Republic and none of the glories. When you do that for a long enough time, you end up with a generation that doesn't know 
why they should be proud to be American. Well, exactly. And why they should be defending America. We are not anywhere near there, but that's the danger. It seems like we are. I mean, what are our shared values? If, if you believe in multiculturalism, then by definition, you're not going to rise to defend your culture because it's equal to every other culture. Well, it depends how you define multiculturalism. I mean, we are a multicultural nation, and we accord respect to the different religions, ethnicities, languages. It's when you say that our own history is so corrupt that ours, our tradition is the one that is, is uniquely the one that is not worth learning. That's when you run into problems. What? I don't think we're near there, but there is a danger, and I think we need to be very careful how we handle that, or we could raise generations that don't know why they should be proud to be Americans and why they should be Americans. I, I hope we're as far from that as you say. Charles Krakenmer, thank you. My pleasure. Turns